Two days ago, Cognition Labs releases Devon. They coined this the first AI software engineer. Now, instead of me just talking about how revolutionary this can be, let me play you their intro video. Hey, I'm Scott from Cognition AI, and today I'm really excited to introduce you to Devon, the first AI software engineer. Let me show you an example of Devon in action. I'm going to ask Devin to benchmark the performance of Llama on a couple of different API providers. From now on, Devin is in the driver's seat. First, Devin makes a step-by-step -step plan of how to tackle the problem. After that, it builds the whole project using all the same tools that a human software engineer would use. Devin has its own command line, its own code editor, and even its own browser. In this case, Devin decides to use the browser to pull up API documentation so that it can read up and learn how to plug into each of these APIs. Here, Devin runs into an unexpected error. Devin actually decides to add a debugging print statement, reruns the code with the debugging print statement, and then uses the error in the logs to figure out how to fix the bug. Finally, Devin decides to build and deploy a website with full styling as the visualization. You can see the website here. All of this is possible today because of the advancements that we've made in both reasoning and long-term planning. It's a really hard problem, and we've only just started, but we're super excited about the progress that we've made so far. In the meantime, if you'd like to try out Devin on your own real-world tasks, send us a request below, and we'd be happy to forward it to Devin. All right, so they claim this is the first fully autonomous AI software engineer. You can see based on long-term reasoning and planning, Devon can plan and execute complex engineering tasks requiring thousands of decisions. It can recall context at every step, learn over time and fix mistakes. So as you can see from the intro video, Devon can operate in multiple windows. So one of them is the shell. Another one is, of course, the code editor where it writes out the code. And it also uses its own browser where it searches the internet for how to solve something or how to fix an error if it runs into one. And of course, there's also a chat function where the human can chat with Devon and instruct it on what to do. So you can see over here, this window is the chat window where you can ask it to do or refine certain things and it would carry it out for you. And then here is the shell. Think of it as like the command line or the terminal. Here is where it can surf the internet to find more information. And then finally, here is where it types out the code. Now, this is not just limited to traditional coding tasks. For example, here it says Devon can learn how to use unfamiliar technologies such as running control net on modal to produce images with concealed messages. So let's check out this video. Hey everyone, my name is Sarah and I'm going to show you how Devon, our AI software engineer, can autonomously learn from a blog post. Within a few minutes, Devon successfully generated this ba desktop background image for me with my name on it. So all I had to do was send this blog post in a message to Devon. From there, Devon actually does all the work for me, starting with reading this blog post and figuring out how to run the code. In a couple of minutes, Devon's actually made a lot of progress. And if we jump to the middle here, you can see that Devon's been able to find and fix some edge cases and bugs that the blog post did not cover for me. And if we jump to the end, we can see that Devon uh, sends me the final result, which I love. I also got two bonus images uh, here and here. So uh, let me know if you guys see anything hidden in these. Hi, I'm Adyan, and today I felt like playing the game of life. So I asked Devin to implement it for me. Devin started by creating a new React application using the shell, and then it started writing some code through its editor. After that, it deployed the app through Netlify. Let's check it out. That seems nice, um, but there's a lot more features which I want to add. So let's ask Devin to do this one at a time. I want the words Devin to be written at the initialization screen instead of it being random. Then I want the word to be slightly bigger and the frame rate to be faster. 
I also want him to fix a bug where the screen gets freezed after three seconds. Let's see the progress Devon has made so far. You can see the diff. And um, the last diff shows that Devon just fixed the bug uh, where the screen gets frozen after three seconds. This seems reasonable to me, so let's move on. Next, I want Devon to increase the frame rate after 10 seconds and also to make the website responsive to different window sizes. I also wanted to make it interactive so that when I click my mouse somewhere, it should spawn a new block. Let's check out what Devon has made so far. It started with Devon, which is what we asked for. And when I click something, it creates a new block as well. That's fun. Um, let's play around with it. Well, that was my evening. So what on earth is Cognition Labs? We haven't really heard about this. At least it's been pretty low key. They've been working in stealth mode the whole time and they just announced Devon. But actually Cognition has some pretty high caliber investors backing them up. So it's a recently formed startup that's backed by Peter Thiel's Founders Fund. Now, Peter Thiel is a co-founder of PayPal. He's part of the PayPal Mafia, which includes like Elon. And a lot of big tech companies have come out of the Founders Fund, including Facebook, SpaceX, Airbnb, Spotify, and even Ethereum. So, you know, by Peter Thiel investing in cognition, he must have seen some pretty good potential in this team or this company. Now, there are other coding assistants out there. The most notable one is GitHub Copilot, which also, it's like a chatbot where you can interact with it and it would output code for you. However, it doesn't really handle the entire project from end to end. The team at Devon claims that it can do that. From writing the code to searching the internet to fix bugs or to figure out something out, and it can even handle projects on Upwork. So it says here, we even tried giving Devon real jobs on Upwork. It could do those too. Hey, I'm Walden, one of the developers here at Cognition AI. We were playing around with whether or not Devin could start a side hustle on Upwork. So here's actual real job from Upwork where the client wants to set up this computer vision model, which actually looks quite interesting. It seems very difficult to set up. Um, I'm not sure how I would start doing this, but you know, you give the task to Devin and ask Devin to figure it out and things just kick off. Devin immediately goes ahead and you can see it sort of starts setting up the repo. It actually runs into some issues here with the versioning. So if you watch how Devin deals with it, Devin's actually updating the code to make these things work. He continues with this, loading and importing packages. You can see that actually downloads images from the internet to run through the model. But you can see here that there are actually some issues that come across. However, Devin knows how to handle these things. Devin kind of pushes through. And if you look closely, Devin's actually doing print line debugging here, where Devin is adding these statements to track where the data flows. And Devin continues to do this until Devin understands how everything's working and actually then updates the code with the fixes after removing print line statements. Devin continues this pattern of fixing code and running it again until it runs the image model across all of these rows across the world. And we can ask for a report from Devin. At which point, Devin sends over some sample images of roads with damage marked out and a nice TXT file explaining Devin's work and the different kinds of outputs of the model. Good job, Devin. Now that was very impressive. So this guy just basically just copy and pasted this request in Upwork. He accepted the job, pasted it into Devin, and Devin did the whole thing. All you need is the link with like a rough tutorial, and Devin was able to search the internet to figure the entire project out, fix bugs where it needed to, and it outputted some example outputs as well as a report with methodology, results, etc. 
So again, super impressive. You can see how this can be leveraged to pretty much do all the Upwork jobs out there. Now, again, there are also similar AIs out there, for example, Baby AGI and AutoGPT, where you're able to prompt it to do something and it can search the web, it can write out code, but these were pretty old and they seem to often get stuck in this infinite loop. There's also Multion, where again, you prompt it on your computer and it can do tasks in different platforms on your computer. So for example, here you're telling it to order these two books on amazon.com and you can see it's actually going to Amazon and then it's telling you the steps that it's doing. So you're it's navigating to amazon.com, it's searching for this book now and it knows to click into this page and add it to the cart and now it's searching for the other book and then clicking onto that item and then adding it to cart. And then it's clicking proceed to checkout and then placing the order. So a ton of these tools exist, but again with this Devon from Cognition Labs, it takes it a step further in that it can remember the entire project end to end. And as far as I'm aware, these other previous tools, they're not able to code an entire project and then proactively search the web to fix bugs or figure something out if it doesn't know how to do it. Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you an AI training an AI. So here we're gonna take the QLora repo, which is a fine tuning method for quantizing large language models. We're gonna feed this repo to our agent, Devin, and all we have to ask Devin is to fine tune a 7B Llama model. Devin clones the repo, figures out how to run it using the readme, sets up all of the requirements using pip, looks through all the scripts, and is able to start running the training job. There are a few hiccups where Devin runs into some CUDA issues, which is to be expected with open source repos, but it's not a problem. Devin looks at the NVIDIA environment and figures out how to reinstall the packages to make it work. After a few more runs, figure out the correct model names, Devin successfully gets the training run working. Here we see training proceeding smoothly, loss is going down, and after a few steps, looks pretty good, I tell Devin to wait as the training job runs. After about an hour, I come back, ask Devin, hey, how's the training going? Devin helps me look. A few hundred steps are done now, and everything is still proceeding smoothly. Looks great. Thanks, Devin, for helping me set up my training run. So again, you just paste in the link to some documentation. Can you fine tune a 7B Llama model using this link? And it goes to that link and basically learns all the info from the documentation. It's really powerful and simple. You can quickly see how this can completely replace junior level engineers. There is absolutely no need to hire any entry level or, you know, junior level developers because with Devon, it's probably a lot cheaper than paying someone over 100k per year, at least in US standards, to develop something. And it's going to take them a lot of time. There's a lot of back and forth. With Devon, it does everything behind the scenes super fast. So you get a completed product or code in only a few seconds. I would go as far as saying even intermediate level engineers are screwed. I'm talking about software engineers here. So again, these people cost over a hundred grand per year, some well over 200 grand. And yes, maybe they can do some more complex jobs compared to junior engineers. But again, if Devin can handle everything, if it can troubleshoot errors and figure things out by browsing the internet, then even these intermediate engineers are not needed. Let me just finish writing this P here. So maybe like the most senior level engineers, the CTO could retain their positions to provide more strategic oversight. But I mean, this tool, Devon, is definitely going to change the tech industry as we know it. On a lighter note, this also gives entrepreneurs who might not be the most familiar with coding, this gives them a very valuable tool to actually build software that they have envisioned building, but they just don't know how to do it, or they couldn't hire anyone competent enough to do it for them. 
for a lot of these entrepreneurs who want to build some software, but they don't have coding knowledge, they often resort to node code platforms such as Bubble. So it's basically like a drag and drop editor where you can, in the end, build out a web app or an app or a website that's fully functional. However, there are a lot of imitations with these node code builders. Yes, they can probably handle the basic functions, but as you get more advanced, it's really hard to customize certain features and functions in your node code app. And eventually you're gonna need to migrate from no code to full code and code out these custom functions yourself. So there's a lot of limitations with Bubble and all these other node code editors, Plus, it takes a long time to build. Like even with drag and drop, you need to set up so many things up. You need to, you know, manually enter in and set up functions and API linkages, etc. It takes at least a few hours to a few days minimum to build something out from Bubble. Whereas again, for Cognition, if it can do all these functions and fix errors along the way from just a simple prompt, and if it gets stuck, it knows how to surf the web itself and solve the problem, then that raises the question, well, what's the need for these node code platforms? Like I can just use Devon to build out a site or an app in a few minutes instead of spending days or weeks manually building it out using node code myself. So again, I think even like the node code industry would be pretty much screwed once Devon is out. You know, they, they might not go bankrupt, but Devon is definitely going to take up a lot of their market share. At least this is what I predict. I'm Tony, an engineer at Cognition. I helped build Devon, and now Devon helps me too. Today at work, I wanted to run a bunch of commands at once and be able to track their status on one screen. I found an open source tool named Mprox to do this. Here it is right here. Looks like it all finished, but the status is way too vague. I don't know which ones failed, they all just say down. I really want to improve the UX here, but I'm not familiar with the code at all, so I had Devin, my AI software engineer, help me. Looks like this person right here had the same issue. So all I gave Devin was the link to the issue and asked Devin to fix it. You can see me make the request right here on the left. Let's see what Devin did. On the right, we can track Devin's work and watch Devin jump from tool to tool. First, Devin clones the repository using the shell, then reads the readme in an editor to learn how to set up the code, then goes back to the shell to install the required dependencies. Devin also opens up a web browser to take a look at the issue. Now, Devin starts coding. At some point, Devin even opens up some Rust documentation to debug a compiler error. Finally, Devin finishes the task and reports a summary of the changes that were made. Let's see if the changes work. I have Devin's code right here. Looks like it worked. The third command succeeded. I can even see the status codes. Here's all the code that Devin wrote for this change. Hey, I'm Neil, and I wanted to show you an example of Devin, our AI software engineer, helping me fix a bug. So I've been using this repo called SymPy. SymPy is an algebra system written in Python. And I noticed this issue where when you take the log of a fraction, you get zoo, which is a type of infinity. So that's definitely wrong, but instead of trying to figure this out myself, I just asked Devin to take a look. Devin immediately jumps in, sets up the repo, and is able to reproduce that same zoo output. Devin then figures out the right part of the code and adds print statements um, in order to figure out what the cause of this issue is. And we can see here that the cause is that integer division leads to a zero, and then we take the log of zero. So based on that, Devin's able to fix the issue in the code by replacing that integer division with true division, and then cleans up the debug output and verifies that the result is what we want. And then Devin even runs the test in the repo as well to make sure nothing else is broken. So that was great. Um, saved me a ton of time. So thank you, Devin. Hey, I'm Andrew, an engineer at Cognition. And I wanted to share a pretty amazing experience I had with Devin. 
So I maintain this big open source repository, uh, which contains a lot of different algorithms uh, used for competitive programming. A lot of people use it. And a few weeks ago, uh, my friend texted me that, you know, there was actually a bug in one of the, in one of the implementations. Uh, the implementation wasn't quite right when the inputs weren't, uh, weren't relatively prime. I kind of glossed over that case when I was implementing it, so I never really thought about it. So I implemented a quick fix, and then I thought that I should test it, but I actually never really got around to writing any test cases. So I thought, if I don't want to do it, uh, I should just ask Devin to do it instead. So I gave Devin the repository, asked, uh, asked Devin to just check it out and start working on it. Uh, so Devin, you know, found the right repository, checked it out, you know, found all files that are in the repository. And then I told Devin what test case I wanted it, him to write. Uh, I just told Devin, you know, these are the inputs, and then try checking for these conditions for me. So Devin wrote the test without too much trouble. Uh, it was, uh, Devin just looked around to understand what exactly, uh, what exactly the test should look like and what exactly the interfaces were. And with this, Devin ran the tests, ran into a quick hiccup, which was a compiler, but Devin is able to solve those very effectively and just added an extra include to fix that. And then uh, was done running this initial test. So then I asked Devin to actually expand the test a little bit. Instead of just testing this one input, I wanted Devin to write test it on all inputs. So just kind of the brute force testing strategy. I use this a lot in my tests, and I just wanted Devin to implement it so that I didn't have to worry about it. So Devin went and rewrote the test function to use four nested for loops. But this time, after Devin ran the tests, Devin actually found a uh, test failure. And now, you know, if the code were correct, there could be compilers in the test, but, you know, the tests seemed really pretty reasonable, so there probably shouldn't be a failure. So Devin went and tried to debug the program for me. So Devin here actually wrote, uh, actually added a print statement to debug the outputs uh, and the uh, inputs to the failing test, reran the tests, and actually found which case was wrong. Uh, in this case, these are the inputs, and then the return value was actually negative nine. Uh, and the, the code I'm running actually should never really return negative values. So Devin realized this and actually went looking in the, uh, it went looking in the code that we're trying to test and actually added this line of code that if extra less than zero, extra plus equals, uh, you know, plus equals something. And to, in order to make sure that the return value was actually non-negative. So after fixing this, Devin actually reran the tests, and now uh, now I can be confident that my code is correct and I have some tests to prove it. Thanks, Devin. Here are the numbers that make Devin really impressive. So here it says Devin correctly resolves 13.86% of the issues end-to-end, -end, far exceeding previous state-of-the-art 1.96%. So this is unassisted. I'll explain what this means in a second. And then even when given the exact files to edit, the previous models can only resolve 4.8% of issues. So here, Devin, you can see it solves for almost 14% of issues, whereas the other best ones, you can see GPT-4 solves 1.74%, Claude 2 solves 4.8%. They haven't included Claude 3. I guess this study was done before Claude 3 was released. But in any case, what this is saying is Devon is, this 14% from Devon is unassisted. So the human doesn't prompt it or guide it further on like what files need to be fixed or what areas need to be fixed. It just kind of figured things out itself. Whereas these were all assisted. The ones in blue meant that the model was told exactly which files need to be edited. And if these were unassisted, then the numbers would be much lower. Here it's claiming that the best one was only 1.96%. So, all right, here's the bad news. Get ready for it. You can't use this yet. So the only way to get access to Devon, at least for now, is, it says, to start using Devon for engineering work, please reach out here where it's a Google form or get in touch at this email, which I will do. I'm really looking forward to testing this out and doing a full review on it. So I'm going to fill out this form. If anyone at Cognition watches this, please remember me and see if you can bump me up the waitlist. I would really love to try this out. Previously, I did a video claiming that AGI is already here, and there are very subtle details that we see already which indicate properties of AGI. So very quickly, here's the table from Google's paper on the levels of AGI. 
if we take a step back and look at what AI has achieved so far, we've built like AI for image generation, such as stable diffusion. We've built AI for video generation, such as Sora or Pika. And then we have, of course, AI for Q&A, for research, for chatting, such as ChatGPT, character AI, etc. And then we also have AI that can be the best Go players in the world, the best chess players, the best StarCraft players in the world. These are AIs that are great at certain tasks. We call them narrow AIs. So we've already reached like superhuman levels where the AI can beat humans on certain tasks, such as Go or StarCraft or predicting protein folding. Now, the next step in this frontier would be developing AGI, which is basically an AI that can do all of these tasks, at least better than 50% of humans. So how AGI is defined is it's able to do a wide range of non-physical tasks, including metacognitive abilities like learning new skills. So it's able to learn new things, improve itself, and also function across different knowledge domains across different platforms. But wait a minute, this Devin, isn't that exhibiting these properties already? You can see just by pasting a link to an Upwork side hustle, you can see he's pasting this documentation in Devon. It's able to learn this thing and then execute on it in different platforms. It can use the terminal, it can use a code editor, it can use the browser to look up more information and fix bugs and figure out how to code something if it doesn't know it. So can we say that this is AGI or at least a very early representation of AGI? And it can do so many things from like creating this image detection app, it can do image generation, it can even create games. So again, we're seeing metacognition, it has knowledge across different domains. So a lot of people are claiming this is considered AGI. So a lot of articles out there are claiming that Devon is the first AGI agent. Now just to caveat this, AGI is kind of used as a buzzword nowadays, so they might have just slapped this on without understanding the full meaning behind AGI, but I do get their point. This can be, in a sense, considered AGI. So let me know what you think about Devon, and if you have access, I'd love to learn what you've done with it and what you think of it so far. And if you're seeing this video and you know someone at Cognition or you work at Cognition yourself, and if somehow you're able to bump me up the waitlist, that would be much appreciated. Wink wink. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. Also, we built a site where you can find AI tools and apps, and also find jobs in AI machine learning and data science. So check it out at ai-search.io.